Master Key Masonry Design, if you can see the website here, is a standalone program. It's also available in PowerPad. Uh, so there are two versions of it. And it's for the design of reinforced and unreinforced masonry wall panels and columns. It'll design to the British, the European and the Irish code of practice. So it covers quite a lot. And what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to start the program and I'm just going to go through the range of different types of design that we do. So if I just pull in the master series and I go to designer suite and into masonry design. And any of you who attended the webinar last uh, month on retaining walls will see that we have an identical style of interface between the program. You have your graphic, your verdicts, your summaries of verdicts, and the tabs to input data. So what we've got here, first of all, is your standard cavity wall panel with a 0.76 kilonewton per meter square uh, wind load on it. And we will see that it's fully fixed all round. And I know that it's working because it's in white. The whole background screen is in white. And all my unity values down here, all less than one or not applicable. So therefore, I know this wall is working. So that is our standard masonry panel. The next panel doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is because we've now made it simply supported on three of the sides and only fixed at the bottom, either fixed using your engineering block or a damp proof course that can transmit um, a moment resistance or even we're on the third floor and we don't have a damp proof course because we're so high up under any of those criteria. And we can see that it now doesn't work. Now I'm not going to go through the stages of actually fixing this at the moment. I'm just going to look at the different types. And the third type is where we've got a wall that's partially fixed. Uh, what we've actually turned around and said, well, well it's actually half fixed, half unfixed in this edge. It's 50% fixity. So we put in a partial fixity, not fixed, not unfixed. And if we look at the data, we will see that we actually have two leaves defined separately. We have an inner leaf that's simply supported and an outer leaf that's not got any support at all. It doesn't actually happen in reality, of course. I, I'm, it's just put in here as an example. And the effect of that is to give us this funny partial fixity, which is less than pinned. And the next type of, of wall is where we've actually manually put in a partial fixity, in this case, 40%. So we can see with 40% fixity here, that is 40% better than pinned, but not as high as fully fixed. We are nearly working. And in this case, I'm sure if you went up to 50%, it might be getting you close. Well, less than 1% overstressing, and we would be able to solve that quite quickly. And we'll probably come back to that and look at that. And then finally, on the cavity wall panels, we've introduced axial load. We've introduced it just to one of the two leaves. We've introduced the axial load to the inner leaf, and we have both concentric and eccentric axial load. So we look at the outer leaf, there's nothing on it. But if we look at the inner leaf, we can see that we have our concentric dead and live loads and our eccentric with our eccentricity. So if I was to reduce that eccentricity to 20 millimeters, it helps us a wee bit. Put it back to what we had, the 30 millimeters, and we're getting a slight problematic design. And I move across now to case five or case six which is to reinforce the wall. So in this case, we've actually introduced some bed reinforcement. And that's not actually working because one of the things we do is we don't just look at your physical, is its moment of resistance good enough or not? We look at our limiting dimensions. And our limiting dimensions are really your, um, your lambdas and your H of over T values. 
and we're seeing that we're actually infringing on our limiting dimension. So the dimension of the wall is a bit too big. So we either have to thicken the wall or we have to make some modification to the effective length. And really, with this being continuous, we could reduce its horizontal effective length to 0.85, depending on what's it, if it's properly continuous and what it's fixed into. If it's properly continuous and fixed into concrete columns, I'm sure we could get away with 0.85. And for users of the software, there's a quite a good technical note on using and modifying those effective uh, widths. So that was one solution. Uh, if we take out the bed reinforcement, we'll see that this wall doesn't actually work. So we were able to come along and pop in this bed reinforcement sensibly only on the inner leaf and make the wall work. And we can sp specify if we run a thicker than a hundred mil leaf, we could put a, a wider um, lever arm between the two bars and we can go for thicker bars. Obviously, you need to be careful when you're at five or eight mil high that you've got a decent mortar bed. So that's our reinforced masonry, very, very simple. And now we move into the slightly more obscure walls, but very powerful and very useful. And this is a shear wall, a vertically and horizontally spanning single leaf shear wall with vertical load and in plane loads. So what do I mean by in plane, plane loads? Well, we have put a 40 kilonewton shear load and a 50 kilonewton meter moment onto this wall. So th this wall has been checked not just for the axial, but also for this shear and moment. And if we look at the wall, we will see that we have no bed reinforcement. Um, it's concrete blocks and it's fixed all around. And it's working very, very well um, for us at this. Now, it's probably worthwhile at this time going in and looking at the different types of bricks and blocks we have, just before we move on to the last two types of walls. On the concrete blocks, we have clay bricks, you have calcium silicate bricks, you have concrete bricks and then blocks, and autoclaved aerated concrete blocks, stone and natural stone. And then we have our group classification because at this moment in time we are working to Euro code EN 1996 or Euro code 6 as it's more commonly known. Unit strength in a minute is 22 newtons. We can change that and see the effects and it's having a little effect on the wall capacity. So at 5.2 newton blocks it's not working. At 7.3 newton blocks, it works, or up to the normal 14 or 10, 10 newton blocks, and we work fine at a 215 wall. Mortar designation is a pretty average 4, and our dimensions are set here also. We also have this eccentric and concentric loads, uh, just because we can. If it's a single leaf, we would probably be thinking more of an eccentric load. But sometimes it's good, particularly if the load's coming from the same level, you would normally put it on eccentric just to allow for inaccuracies in placement. So moving forward, we now have our freestanding walls. In this case, a two and a half meter high wall with a one kilonewton wind load and the moment capacity is at 3.5, so we're failing absolutely miserably. Now, the first thing we could think about here is that we turn around and say, well, it's non-critical, because if it falls down, it's not stabilizing any other part of structure. So that's going to pull us down a wee bit in our load factors. Um, obviously, reinforcement isn't going to do much use because it's reinforcement only enhances the horizontal flexural strength. So possibly the solution would be to go to our next wall, which would be a peered wall. And with this peered wall, we're not quite there yet. And I, as you click on one of these options, it gives you th that value, which is actually quite nice. Um, Sometimes scares you when you click accidentally and you think, oh gosh, where's it gone? But no, it's taking you to the, the sensible, relevant point. So if I want to find out why it's failing, 
I can see it's filling because under lateral loads we have a capacity of 1.89 and a applied MD of 3.5. So what can we do? We can either change our dimensions of our piers, bring them closer together, make them deeper. So if we go up to 550, we've really, really reduced that um, overloading uh, down to 1.15. So 550 looks good. We could even say, well, let's move in to 1800 centers and it works. Or if we're stuck due to our very nice architect to 2250, we could look at other ways of making this work. And naturally, we probably want to check, yes, we've got blocks. Um, we're going to check the mortar strength. And usually once you get above about 20 or, t or 10, you don't get an increase in, in flexural strength. Obviously, check your mortar designation as well. Uh, not going to have much of an effect here. What's left for me is the looking at the lateral load. I'm going to say yes, it's non-critical again. And in this case, even the non-critical is not reducing my load factor because that's a, a BS function rather than a Eurocode function. So if I was doing this wall in the British standard, I might actually get it to work using that practice. So if I actually come back and say, well, actually, let's design it to the BS. Yes, it works. And this introduces the concept in the master series that you're able to switch between one type of design code to another and compare. So you can say, well, actually, this is failing miserably. Would it work to the other one? Yes, it does. So there's something in the code that's a bit different. Um, if it's failing in both, you know that you're still wrong. Very, very simple. Uh, let's go back to the Euro code. And in the Euro code, we have our different annexes. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. And we have the built in the UK one plus the defaults. So let's use the Euro code, code norm defaults and see if that's any better or any worse or the, the BS. You also have the recourse. And I'll look at this later on of going back and using or uh, creating your own Euro default sets of values for the national application documents. Because bear in mind, there's more countries using this um, Eurocode now than I can even think of. Because there's certainly countries outside the European Union that are adopting the Eurocodes and looking at them. So how can we make this work? Possibly we need a bigger wall. Or we need to reduce it. Um, the wall strength isn't giving us anything. Obviously the wall data is not telling us anything. Uh, because all we know is it's 2.5 meters high. Nothing else there is the limit. This dimensions, we can certainly make it work if we go to 665 uh, in thickness, which is quite a deep wall. Uh, but if it's needed, it's needed. And there's nothing else I'd like to try and modify there. Uh, the lateral load, I have no more tricks up my sleeve. Um, openings, obviously, I don't need. Bed reinforcement, I don't know that it's really going to help you because certainly it might help the interspan, but it's not going to help the main fletch roll, which is the real design. So our solution is to go and give ourselves a th the thicker wall at 625, or if we only wanted it at 450, we would have to reduce the width quite narrowly to this code. Or if you want the 225, we might consider widening the wall pier as well. So those are all different solutions. I'm not trying to get a solution for you today. I'm trying to demonstrate the different points of the software. And then we move forward into the last two items of the program. And this is the openings in the wall. Looking at this wall, and we're going to look at this wall to BS. Still fails. 1.37. And if we look at the wall opening data, we have several methods of design. We have this, the typical span it horizontally. So it's spanning across here, and then this is panning up and down here. So this little sub-panel is free in this edge, 
continuous, continuous, and continuous, and then spanning horizontally. And that's giving us quite large failures of 4.8. If I try and span it vertically, it's coming down to 4.1 and 4. Obviously, these little panels now are quite happy, but we're still not working. And then we would try and do a mixed spanning, and we're getting quite close because what we're allowing it to do is to take a bit of fixity by making it span longer but have fixity at the same time. And that does help. And this is more akin to the yield line where the yield lines are going to come flowing out across these corners. And it is a mixed um, method that we've developed. So with this method, I'm only around 6% or 10% or overstressed. So my solutions would be possibly to drop some bed reinforcement in which will strengthen it in the horizontal directions and that gives our solution that works. That's solution one. Solution two, maybe look at the and say, oh gosh, we would prefer to have solid blocks here. Well, solid didn't really help me and moving my grades hasn't really helped me. It's helped me a wee bit. There we go. So it's not going any further at that, at 22 Newton blocks. Um, the outer leaf, ah, our outer leaf is using clay. So we're looking at here, clay bricks, and we're looking at 7 to 12. Have I said, well, actually, I've got 7% blocks, uh, bricks. Clay bricks with water absorption less than 7%, uh, it works. And that is my solution. Naturally, if I was stuck with the old... Um, 7 to 12 bricks, my solution either is this bed reinforcement or to think about coming along and increasing the internal leaf to 140. So an internal leaf 140 will make that work or using a stronger clay brick. And the last type of, of masonry wall is with two openings. And it's exactly the same principle methodology. Inner is clay blocks. Outer is bricks that have already been reduced to less than 7%. Um, we could adjust our manufacturing to special, special. And it's the inner leaf's the problem. So we can come down here to special, special on the inner leaf. And we find that works. Or maybe special manufacturing, no, that's still giving us 8%. So what I'm trying to demonstrate here, ladies and gentlemen, is that you have the ability to design a lot of different masonry walls for different shapes and configurations. And you have the tools to solve your problems. Finally, the last type of panel we do is the column. Now that's not two different leaves, that's just looking at it in two different directions. And that's just looking at it in two di different directions, so end on and face on. So we have a column, a masonry column, loaded up, and at the minute it's got a capacity of 2.1, so it's 110% overstressed. We will go with a solid block, so we're 102%. And we'll probably go for special manufacturing, good blocks. And we're down to 70. We want to increase, because most of this is going to be axial, increase our blocks up to 17 Newton blocks, 22 Newton blocks, and we are working fine. And this is to the BS. What would happen if we moved over to the Euro code? Will it still work? Let's find out. And it, it doesn't. Uh, that's a shame. So we'd need to do some more work to make that work to the Eurocode. So it looks as if in each case our Eurocode is a wee bit more onerous on masonry than it is on um, other co uh, materials. So those are our typical types of panels.